Hey, it's Lou, and Casey's asked me to come up with a catchphrase for this show. And that's the way it is. I'm not totally married to it, but the best I've got so far is, here's the thing. You stay classy, San Diego. So, here's the thing. Netflix is getting more expensive, at least here in the US. I got an email about two weeks ago saying I have to pay $10.99 a month instead of the $9.99 I had been paying. Look, I know none of this is breaking news. Happening now, breaking news. The announcement came back in October, but if you want some dude in a suit and makeup reading you the headlines, you've got plenty of options. What I'm interested in is Netflix's business model and this counterintuitive notion that governs some of the companies I, and probably you, use the most. Companies like Uber, Snapchat, and Spotify. And that counterintuitive notion is profits aren't that important. How does Netflix make money? Simple, monthly subscription fees. And here's a fun fact for you. There are approximately 110 million Netflix subscribers in 190 countries. I know there are 193 countries that are part of the United Nations, so I wondered which three don't have Netflix. Do you know which ones they are? I'll give you a couple of seconds to guess. The answers? North Korea, China, and Syria. Oh, and also Crimea, which is part of Ukraine, which the Russians invaded, which is a whole long story. I digress. Netflix has 110 million paying customers every month, and from those customers, Netflix generates billions in revenue. They expect to generate over 11 billion in revenue in 2017, and yes, that includes the DVD service. I am still a member, perhaps the last member in my humble opinion. The streaming service doesn't have a stellar movie selection. Last year, a blog noted that of the top 250 movies on IMDb, Netflix only had 31 available on streaming. Not so good for movie buffs. So 11 billion in revenue in 2017, that's what Netflix takes in, a ton of money. But Netflix spends like Casey Neistat in a camera store. I mean, look at the dude, he's holding a camera. Anyway, that means they spend a lot. For example, the first season of The Crown, which I guess old people like or something, costs approximately $130 million. That's reportedly the most expensive season in television history. And The Get Down, which I wanted to love because it's set in the Bronx and my life is set in the Bronx, that's where I live, cost $120 million. Some reports even said that it was as much as $200 million. Unfortunately, the show sucked. The Bronx, however, is awesome. Dave Chappelle, Netflix reportedly paid the comedian 60 million for three stand-up specials. And you thought CNN made crazy purchases. All in all, in 2017, Netflix spent about $6 billion on content. That's according to CEO Reed Hastings. For comparison, Amazon spent about $4.5 billion in 2017, and Hulu and HBO spent about $2.5 billion each. The number one big spender on content in 2017, anyone wanna guess? It's ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Analysts estimate they spent $8 billion for programming in 2017. Almost a quarter of that is just for Monday Night Football. Not a great investment. I hate bad investments. But back to Netflix. So $11 billion in revenue. $6 billion of that goes to pay for content. Netflix said they spent about another billion on technology. That's keeping their platform current and user friendly. Then there's marketing. All those commercials and billboards. Then obviously they have operating costs, employees, rent, debt, etc. So at the end of the day, Netflix projects they'll make something like $800 million in 2017. Seems like a lot, but relatively low, about 7% of that 11 billion they bring in. But this is the thing about modern tech companies. They don't really care about making money, at least about making money right now. Uber loses billions of dollars every year. Spotify loses hundreds of millions. Snapchat has warned it may never make a profit. Tesla somehow has become the hottest automobile company without generating a dime in profits. Because these disruptive companies with so much potential take the long view. They don't care about making a billion today, they care about making a trillion in the future. And how do you do that? Grow, keep adding customers, keep getting people to download your app or use your service, get people hooked, become part of their everyday routine. Think about Amazon. They lost money for years, but in the process, they got consumers addicted to them. And they've also eliminated much of their competition. Now, they own a huge share of the e-commerce market, and the money is rolling in. All they had to do was be patient. But if a company is impatient, if they try to extract profits too early, then they could die. So Netflix could spend less on content if they want to, which would increase their income, but that might turn away customers. And in fact, Netflix plans on spending even more on content next year, about $8 billion. Now that I'm hooked to Netflix, they could slowly raise the price on me. $9.99 becomes $10.99, becomes $11.99, et cetera. 
Although there is a caveat here, Netflix has competition in the form of Hulu, Amazon, and others. So none of them could rapidly or drastically increase their prices because consumers will just go somewhere else. But keep an eye on your Uber bill. As it becomes more popular, will it become more expensive? Ditto with Spotify and Snapchat, which might go the way of Facebook and inundate us with even more ads. Now, the good news in all of this is that Beam's app, Panels, is probably years away from the point where we've got enough users hooked where we'll start thinking about a profit. So please, come and enjoy the free ride while it lasts. Link to the sign-up is in the description. All right, I'm going to go live my life. Oh, that's my ending catchphrase, by the way.